Thief Rogue. What a bizarre subclass to cover out of all the things in this book. This video is not what you think it is. Normally when I make content, I heavily rely on the books because it's literally impossible for me to guess every table. Now, sure, I know what the average tables are like and how many encounters they have on average, but I usually lean on the most extreme cases because those are the dangerous ones. But I actually don't know how common magic shops are in people's games, so... I did a pull, and it looks like it's rare. Common is pretty high too. For me, no magic shops. I haven't seen one in years. I remember robbing one of them like a long time ago. Anyways, magic shops are rare in people's games. The price tags and what items are available is impossible for me to guess because everyone runs shops differently. The old DMG doesn't have price tags for magic items, just rarity. So people homebrew, and it's impossible to know what the common homebrew is. In one game, you'll find a weapon of warning for 5,000 gold. In another, you'll find it for 300 gold. It's completely random. The new DMG that's coming out will have price tags, and most people on average follow what the book says. That's when I can properly make this video, but I want to make it anyways because it's interesting to talk about. I have a theory. Wizards of the Coast are known for crazy magic items. We can already see it with the scrolls. They're extremely cheap. Cantrips and first level spell scrolls are actually in adventuring gear. I'm not joking, look. That means you can find first level spell scrolls in like a general store, which is crazy. That's awesome. They're 50 gold a pop for first level resources. Scribing scrolls is half the cost. Speaking of, I think we have a good idea what the full price tags for scrolls will be in the DMG. I think second level spell scrolls will be 200 gold. Third level will be 300 gold. Fourth level is 2,000 gold, and so on. If I'm right, oh boy, things are gonna get wild. That brings me to wands like Wand of Web or Wand of Magic Missile, which are uncommon magic items, both with seven charges. Wand of Magic Missile doesn't even need attunement. So if you have a lot of them, you know. Brrr. Now, what if they made both of these like 1,000 gold because they're uncommon? That would be crazy for anyone in the party that can use them, right? That's cheaper than full play armor. Kobold, you're babbling. What does this have to do with Thief Rogue? The Thief has super interesting features that make scrolls and magic items better. So feeding the money gets really funny. The more money and shops there are in the game, the more powerful this rogue becomes to a point where it's not even a rogue anymore, even though it might have 17 levels in Rogue. Welcome to Pack Tactics, where the thief might be the 2024 artificer if you feed it enough money. Now, there's a lot of DM fiat behind this, but to be fair, there's tons of DM fiat for marshals in general, so it might not be that different. At least you can scribe scrolls. But that's if you dip one level into one of the full casters, which I assume you will. Anyways, the video. Level 3, fast hands. As a bonus action, you can do one of the following. The thing we care about is use an object. Take the utilize action or take the magic action to use a magic item that requires that action. So you can now action cast with a magic item, then bonus action cast with the same magic item or a different magic item. The one spell with a spell slot per turn rule doesn't apply to you. That's double the spell power. And this isn't like the old action surge where you had to short rest. You could just keep on doing this. Now, of course, you're spending more resources than most casters can probably do in a round. And the resource is tied to gold, especially with scrolls. But 50 gold for first level scrolls? Well, yeah! Woo! If you do a quest and the party makes a thousand gold each, that thief can get 20 different first level spell scrolls. If the wizard hands them another thousand, that's another 20, so that's 40 total. That's a lot of first level resources. Now, obviously, if there's wands available at the shop, then buy the wands instead. Seven charges is a lot, and you regain 1d6 plus one expended charges daily at dawn. But back to that 20 or 40 spell scrolls idea. How many 
many spell slots does a wizard have at level 20 in total? Counting first, second, third level and up. They have like 22 spell slots in total. Now sure, they have arcane recovery, so it's technically even more. But anyways, let's say all of your 20 scrolls are sleep scrolls alone. That many alone at level 3 with 2 encounters a day every day will probably last you 4 or 5 days. And that's me assuming you're casting 2 sleep scrolls every encounter. That's an extremely liberal assumption. That's a lot of sleeps for just one encounter. If the sleep consistently lands very well or you're conservative with it, then it will probably last you like 2 weeks. Keep in mind this was just a thousand gold. That's less money than full plate armor! Think about it, they're action attacking somebody, maybe they get sneak attack off, probably. Then bonus action cast sleep, maybe it knocks out a creature or two. Maybe even four, that would be nuts. That's a really big play at tier 1 and tier 2. Or what you can do is, round 1, cast sleep at the boss. Oh, he made the save? Well, that's fine, just throw sleep again on the same round. That's basically like disadvantage. Sure, you blew 100 gold, but getting the boss out immediately is really important. If they have legendary resistance, you're burning that away quicker. Whoa, you're like the old monk! Yeah, kind of. Old monk, even though it did bad damage, was actually really good at burning legendary. Legendaries. That's basically gone now for monks, kind of a shame, but oh well. That was their unique standout back in the day. But now we just have Thief, and I'll gladly help this Thief get enough money for our scrolls and wands. What if everyone in the party pools their money together to get a wand of fireball early? That Thief can cast two fireballs in one turn. That's insane. That's 16 d6 AoE damage. On average, that's like 56. So if you hit two targets with those fireballs, that's easily over 100 damage total in one turn. You're incredible at nuking, and you are legitimately keeping up with fiend warlocks who are spamming fireballs. With one or two encounter days, you're straight up better than them. Keep in mind you're a rogue with expertise in arcana, you better pick arcana. So you can also scribe scrolls yourself if you have a wizard dip. And that also lets you use magic staffs and wands too. Maybe your wizard buddy can join in and make scrolls with you. Good bonding. It makes you more powerful. By the way, the scrolls you make are tied to your spell save DC and spell attack bonus. If you have 16 intelligence, then your DC will scale just fine as you level. Like the sleep scrolls you make will never be bad. They will always be useful. Another great option is hideous laughter scrolls, which is better for single targets and bosses. The DMG is isn't out yet, so I don't know the DCs for all the leveled scrolls, but we do know that first level scrolls you buy at the store have a set DC of 13. As you progress, these scrolls at the store obviously become weaker and weaker, but you have to remember the unique advantage you have with these cheap scrolls. You can spam them. Like if a creature has plus 5 wisdom save, that's a 35% chance they will fail the save against the DC 13 sleep scroll. That sounds pretty bad right? But if you're double casting sleep on that round, that's a 57% chance they will fail. That's the same as giving them disadvantage. We love giving creatures disadvantage. You could also buy a ton of magic missile scrolls. Those are auto hits. 10.5 DPR. If you cast them twice in the same round, that's 21 DPR. That's the same as like a fourth level magic missile. Now, I don't recommend you double cast magic missile, but you do have that option. Obviously, you want to attack with your main action to get sneak attack off. But if you have nothing to do with your bonus action, then bonus action magic missile is great. There you don't need to worry about the scaling at all. You just auto hit. As for higher level spell scrolls, if the spell is on your class's spell list, but is of a higher level than you can normally cast it, you have to make an ability check using your spell casting ability to determine whether you cast it successfully. With rogue focused with skills, that doesn't help much. It's not like you can use reliable talent to auto succeed at everything. Now, of course, course, this might change in the DMG. Like, it would be awesome if they changed the check into Arcana, which I think they will actually do. But anyways, you have two options. Either you just have three levels in Thief and go rest in Wizard. That's the most optimal play in my opinion, so I do highly recommend it. Or you can go through the painful crawl to get to 13 levels in Thief. There you get a feature called Use Magic Device. It says you've learned to maximize use of magic items. Grant 
granting you the following benefits. Attunement, you can attune up to four magic items at once. Charges, whenever you use a magic item property that expends charges, roll 1d6. On a roll of six, you use the property without expending the charges. Scrolls, you can use any spell scroll using intelligence as your spellcasting ability for the spell. If the spell is a cantrip or a level one spell, you can cast it reliably. If the scroll contains a higher level spell, you must succeed on an intelligence arcana check. On a successful check, you cast a spell from the scroll. On a failed check, the scroll disintegrates. Attunement and charges are straightforward, but notice in scrolls it says arcana check. That means your expertise and reliable talent is going to work with this. I think all scrolls in the new DMG are going to be ruled like this, which again, helps my case. Anyways, you can use any spell scrolls. That can be from the druid list, cleric list, whatever. And at this level, your party probably has infinite money, so you can go wild. I don't know if it's obvious by now, but this is the best rogue in the entire game. Cool, you missed a ton of features this thief gets. Yeah, I did. I just wanted to talk talk about the interesting stuff really but yeah we can go through everything now but before we get into that plush oh no uh, no 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 this is part of scroll optimization i will show features in this ad and i'll talk about them anyways plushies this littlest optimizer will remind you to create scrolls every day can he create scrolls for me oh i wish no the littlest optimizer judges you in silence he does give you advantage on your attacks though so if you're using a bonus action Ray of Frost scroll together with a light crossbow with the slow property, you reduce the target speed down by 20 if both hit. If you have Cunning Strike at level 5, then you can maybe trip them. If everything lands, that creature spends 5 feet to stand up and only 5 feet to move. That's assuming the creature has 30 speed total. You basically shut them down. Well, for the most part. Not gonna lie, this is kind of a meme. You only really do this if you think you have enough sleep scrolls or whatever or just have a wanda web i don't know you do this when resources aren't a problem does cantrip scroll scale with level yeah it does it says so right here you can actually do some really funky things with thief Imagine a Warlock with Repelling Blast double casting Eldritch Blast. A build like that is a very hungry version of Illusionist Bracers. If you look up Illusionist Bracers Warlock on Google, you'll just find a bunch of people saying how broken it is. Now you can turn that into a build basically. Oh my god, at level 5 you can push someone 40 feet. Yeah, the world's smallest optimizer will help you out. Everything I mentioned is an attack roll. This kobold needs your help though. It's not in production yet, but with 80 more orders, we reach our goal, and that will put it into production. Then the project was successful! Absolutely! Then we'll try to do a gator version. Yeah! Check out the adorable bold. Link in the description. One more thing before we go to Thief features. I almost forgot. Elves are extremely powerful with this playstyle. They get trance. They only need to sleep for four hours. So as soon as you wake up, scribe a scroll while the party is asleep. Boom, you're halfway done with a first level scroll immediately, and the day hasn't even started. If you convince the party to have four hours of downtime every day as soon as they wake up, then you'll always craft a scroll every day, so long as you have money. It's 25 gold, guys. This is really easy. You can probably steal that money. If you're that extremely tight on money, then just go for the cantrip one. It's 15. If you have a party member who rest casts, they probably need that four hours anyways, like for example, Gift of Alacrity, Aid, and or Death Ward. Of course we want to start the day with those buffs, and together with those buffs, you scribe the scroll. There's so many benefits here. But Kobold, what if my team is unreasonable like the suggestion spell? You're already at the halfway point, so finding some time is really easy. The easiest is when the party long rests. You stay up those four hours to finish the scrolls and then go to bed. Then when you wake up, so does your party. Elf can also pick up Elven Accuracy in the progression, and that triggers all the time with Supreme Sneak. I'm not gonna get into that feat for this video, just know that Elf is really good on a thief. 
fast hands. I read this before. You can bonus action pick a pocket. In the playtest, I was like, this sucks. And it, I still have that opinion. But what I didn't think about at the time is you can straight up steal a caster's component pouch. And that can really cripple their spell casting. You might think this is strong, but keep in mind that most monsters coming out nowadays have an innate spell casting. So majority of the time, this is bad. Quickly on the bonus action, use an object for non-magical items. You can do quite a lot with rope in combat. Action to use rope and or bonus action to use rope. If you knock out the boss with a sleep scroll, maybe you can tie him up in the same round. That way, if he wakes up, he also has to deal with the rope, so double shut down. Second story work gives you climb speed equal to your speed. I rate this very highly because this is a poor man's version of flight. Basically, what you do is encounter starts, climb a building or a wall or whatever, and then shoot down at the melee enemies. It's really straightforward. Level 3 Thief Rogue is like utter insane. Two really, really good features immediately. Jumper determines jump distance with dexterity rather than strength. I don't think you'll be using this often, but with a pole and a jump scroll, you can jump super long jumps. Maybe the enemies have set up spike growth or something, and you just jump over the spike growth. Well, then the jump scroll is doing all of the work, not your actual feature. Well, whatever, you have it. Oh, that's what you can do. You can jump over the caltrops or something. Supreme sneak, straightforward again. Obviously good with range. You just peek, shoot, and just stay hidden. In a dungeon where fights usually matter the most, this is easy. There's cover everywhere. It does shave off 1d6 sneak attack damage, but that's whatever, because advantage to your attacks basically makes up for that in DPR. You're also very unique. If you cast an effective web through your wand down a hallway or cast another important concentration spell in general, then cunning action hide and just constantly use supreme sneak from there, you're fighting incredibly safe. Attack rolls against you have disadvantage, you have cover, and any effect that requires sight doesn't work on you. But anyways, if you're concentrating on something really, really important, and it's really well placed, then whatever your damage is doesn't matter. The spell is doing majority of the work. Keeping that up as long as possible is actually your main goal, and this feature helps you with that. Undoing your spell is insanely hard, especially if you have constitution proficiency. By the way, for some reason, you can't use this feature with Heavily Obscured. I don't know why, I think they just forgot. Well, whatever. As you can see, every feature I went through so far have been really good. Excellent subclass. But I've saved the best for last. Capstone. Thief Reflexes at level 17. Keep in mind, full casters have 9th level spells. You are adept at laying ambushes and quickly escaping danger. You can take two turns during the first round of any combat. You take your first turn at your normal initiative, and your second turn at your initiative minus 10. Holy moly! Yeah, this is one of the best capstones in the entire game. It's up there with Illusory Reality, which is the best. Your power is doubled in the first round. To put it into perspective, with a Staff of Power, you can cast three Fireballs and then cast Wall of Force last. That will drain the entire staff in one round. The first round. That's bonkers. And these are 5th level Fireballs, so you're probably doing over 300 damage total. And then auto shut down a creature with wall of force. That's a massive play out of the gates. Super funny. Best of all, if the party has enough resources and scrolls and magic items, the wizard and the party might actually simulate from you for even more spell power because you are literally a machine gun. With the simulacrum, you can cast eight leveled spells in one round. Eight! That's so many! You're gonna cast control and blast everywhere. This is the best marshal in the entire game, but it kind of depends on the table. If your party is good with teamwork and magic items drop often and there's magic shops, then yeah, this is absolutely the best. If you're playing something like Curse of Strahd, then don't play this. You're going to be starved of magic items and money. As for gritty realism games, oh boy, best marshal in the game every time. You get so much downtime in those games because short rest is eight hours. 
hours, and long rest is seven days. You and your party are literally printing scrolls like crazy. You get so many resources in gritty realism games that you don't even need to think anymore. You just blow everything. You've got a million scrolls. I'm probably gonna cover this again once the DMG is out. Maybe I'll make an early build, I don't know. The DMG is really going to determine how powerful this thief is. This is very exciting. What a fun video. I'm so excited for the DMG now. I hope I'm right, because if so, that's really funny. End of video. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the plushies. I really want them in production. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.